Some people say that the persecutions of Baptists in yesteryear were horrible, but sometimes the most dangerous position that Baptists have been in is the present tense, present age, because everyone wants a big church. And when you have big churches, you have to lower the boundaries. You have to lower the gates. You have to lower the fences. We're going to start on page 47 now. Leonard B. Siegel, S-I-G-L-E, an Oklahoman by birth, a graduate of Southwestern Baptist Theological Seminary in Fort Worth in Texas and came to the Pacific Northwest in the late 20s attended the convention and led one of the one of the devotional Sigel had been pastor of First Baptist Church in Longview, Washington and the First Baptist Church of Klamath Falls, Oregon had been missionary for the landmark brethren missionary for the landmarkers, those are the ones that uh, the real missionary southern orthodox the what we might call the the orthodox landmark missionary southern baptist working with the interstate baptist mission Sigel, who has organized 35 churches he organized 35 churches in the Pacific Northwest. I've only organized two. <laughs> I'm way behind them. Which have ultimately cooperated with the Southern Baptist is now a faithful general missionary of the Southern Baptist Convention of California. He has organized only one church that is now a Southern Baptist church. That is not a Southern Baptist church. Now, these are men. <clears throat> now, let's go back to a period of time. I know, Marilyn, you, you, you are acquainted with this time. Marilyn's family, uh, her father was vice president of Mobile Oil Company, so they had a lot of gratuities that normal people during the war, World War II, did not have. Uh, they had food to eat, they had meat. You went and bought a whole beef over there in Cuyama Valley, didn't you? Yeah. And, uh, I mean, people were eating walnut meatloaf and all kinds of things, stuff with meatloaf. You couldn't get butter. You couldn't get milk. You couldn't get a lot of things. Sugar. You couldn't get sugar. You couldn't get all these things. You couldn't even get buttons for your clothes, could you? No, they were made out of milk. The, the, the buttons? For the clothes, the women's clothes were made out of milk and they, they had to take them off when they washed them and sew them back on when you put them back together. Is that correct, Marilyn? Yeah. This and is a different world, a different time. We did, our, our underpants had buttons on to button them. We couldn't have elastic. No, you and, couldn't have yeah. elastic because all went to war. You couldn't have any brass. You, the milk, they took almost all the milk and made powdered milk or canned milk and sent it over as rations. And uh, <clears throat> among Baptists, it was a real hardship. You couldn't get gasoline. You couldn't get tires for your car. We you had, couldn't get food. <coughs> we had to save uh, grease strippings and they made glycerin out of it. Yeah, save grease drippings, your lard and stuff, and they make glycerin out of that. Things were, it was a different world. Now, I'm going to read this here. Before the orphanage deal was consumed, Lackey received uh, a telephone call from the sheriff at Riverside County for him that he had the California and Southern Baptist editor in jail. <laughs> you know what it was about? It was about rations on a fraud charge. Davis was charged with obtaining food rations stamped under false pretense of some other charge similar to that, and it was alleged that he had fewer children in the home than his application for food rations indicated. I mean to tell you, you went to jail. 
You couldn't go down and buy a tire. Mm -mm. You couldn't go down and buy an inner tube. You couldn't go down and buy a pound of butter. Mm -mm. Now this preacher went to jail over this. Like he got in his old 1936 Dodge, which had carried him thousands of miles up and down California, had been his hotel room many nights, and drove through a blinding snowstorm over a mountain between Bakersfield and Upland, that's over the, the bridge route, in order to head off any further embarrassment. And when he arrived, he paid for the papers and destroyed them. Until this day, no one knows what Davis had in the issue of the paper. In the meantime, the snowstorms was so severe over the ridge route that Lackey had to come back to Fresno by way of Santa Barbara, Santa Maria, and up the coast and not over the passes. On the way home, he picked up a man by the name of Anderson and won him to Christ, commenting on the incident years later, Lackey said, oh well, it wasn't all a loss. We ought to save the soul in the meantime. <clears throat> Now, I just want to bring that out just a little bit about food rationing. I used to have a lot of food rationing stamps. You had to have stamps to go buy anything. Just think about it now. Marilyn's father worked in the oil industry and that was extremely important, wasn't it? Very important. So he could get tires for his cars and he could buy a new car. He you know, you to, couldn't buy a new car. He had to hide the tires in the attic. He had to hide the tires in the attic, okay? <laughs> this is this this we don't know about. Now when COVID came out, COVID nineteen, remember, you could go to the grocery stores and there wasn't any food on the shelves. And and half of the grocery stores right now, uh, up in this area, there aren't food in many departments. Sometimes the whole aisle will be empty. I went in there a while back and I couldn't find any onions. Couldn't find any avocados. I couldn't find any uh, potatoes. Couldn't find any lettuce. Back then, you couldn't buy anything without a stamp. You couldn't buy a thing without a stamp. People had victory gardens. Yeah. Remember the victory gardens? We had a victory Victory garden. gardens. If you wanted to eat, you better have a victory garden. <laughs> as simple as that. <clears throat> Here we go again now. The little controversy, the little wrestling matches among the Southern Baptists in California. They were Southern Missionary Baptists, is what they were. While John W. Williams was interested in the election of Mrs. Arnold to membership on the board, he was far more interested in the election of Horace F. Burns to the editorship of the California Southern Baptist. He therefore presented his name and stated that he was a unanimous recommendation of the committee, G.E. Armstrong got up and said that he would like to settle the matter of membership on the first board first, for his wife had told him that morning that if he allowed a woman to be elected on the board that she would never uh, hear him preach again. They didn't want women in any managerial position at all at that time. He made a motion the election was uh, that it would be deferred until later than the next meeting, but it was defeated. <clears throat> I'm taking a little bit of time to, to go through here. I've got some things uh, marked that I need to read. We're not reading everything here, but uh, I'm filling in between, as always. I've read this thing many times. <clears throat> there was a lot of dissension and fighting going on during this time over people and different things. Like I said so many times, they fought over things that weren't important. If you go back and look at this period of time, the people that are opposing are strong Baptists. The ones that are appointing are, uh, opposing are strong Baptists in most ways. 
Now they were fighting here that uh, Lackey, they didn't want Lackey in here. When the nominating speeches were all over, someone rose up and said he believed that the convention should have a season of prayer before voting, in response to which the uh, president called on Silas Hill to pray. He got down on his knees between two rows of seats, and he said in substance, Now, Lord, there ain't a bit of this, of us uh, bothering you about this at all. Everyone already knows how he's going to vote. You know, the Lord, that I came down here to vote for Lackey, and I wish everybody else would but I know that they won't, and whatever mistakes we make today, Lord, we hope that no one will blame you for it. And then uh, it was soon announced that Allen was elected by a vote of 104 to 96. When the result of the voting was announced, Lackey quietly arose and said, May God help me to be too big or too little. Don't help me to be too big or too little. Help me to do what I need to do. In the end, Lackey was still executive secretary until his successor had been elected and had qualified. There are 25 more churches had been added to this convention now and to this association. They had a uh, proposed a hospital in Los Angeles. Now the thing about this is uh, many times the Southern Baptists came into uh, churches and asked churches to take up an offering for a hospital. And the intuition, they insinuated that if you were a Baptist, if you went to the hospital, you wouldn't have a bill. They insinuated that if you went to a Baptist hospital and you were a Baptist person, that you would not have a bill when you left that hospital. But when some of these prominent members had gone there and undergone sometimes lengthy visits and uh, operations, sometimes they lost their house and property because they sued them for the, for the bill. They were very upset, very upset. Now, <clears throat> everything was going along harmonious about many, many different things. Uh, the, uh, <clears throat> they voted to do the hospital, and, and I mean there was thousands, hundreds of thousands of dollars in this. Now we go back to page 167, page 67. And we're going to get all our, our old friend, Dr. Bailey, J.W. Bailey. This is the old Negro gentleman. Now, by the way, he was born in 1862 or 63, right in the middle of the Civil War, this old man then, this gentleman then. Dr. J.W. Bailey, who had been practically ever meeting of any consequence that Southern Baptist held for, for years, was present with his usual plea that he be elected missionary, he wanted to be elected at the same salary that the city superintendents of missions received, stating that he thought there should be no racial discrimination in this matter at all. I would like to have the same salary that the white missionaries have. Most of the brothers were sympathetic with Dr. Bailey and wanted to do something to help him minister to his race, but all of uh, them thought that $250 per month was too much salary to pay at that time. When Floyd Looney suggested that he be employed but no salary set until it was learned what the Home Mission Board paid Negro missionaries. Why would it make any difference? This is the good, the bad, and the ugly, and this is the ugly and the bad. Dr. Bailey strongly protested. Now this is an educated man. He's a man that served the Lord all of his life and done most of it on his own. Like I said, I went through Bakersfield out there on Cottonwood Road and different places. I have preached at these churches, haven't I, Marilyn? Yeah. Yeah, I preached out there on Cottonwood Road mm -hmm. called Martin Luther King. Now I preached at the Riverview Missionary Baptist Church. I'll tell you a little bit about this. Dr. Bailey had something to do with all this. 
I had a, I've had a lot of black people, a lot of Hispanic people in my classes over the years. The greatest uh, ministry I've done is to those that were Catholics. I've had like three or four hundred Catholics converted under my ministry, or more, probably more, maybe a thousand. But uh, I had some black girls in my class. One of them was Stacy. She was a wonderful girl. She died when she was, I think, 32 years old. She died of lupus complications. If she wasn't in my class, something was wrong. She was in the hospital. She loved me. She'd give little things to me and things, little things, birthday cards and whatever, little donations and things, always. She had a twin brother. And she died and they, she wanted me to preach her funeral. But the family wanted me to have the funeral at this Missionary Baptist Church off of Cottonwood Road. And I, uh, <clears throat> I objected a little bit. I said, we got a church here that's got, you could seat 3,500 people at least, or 4,000. And all of this is being offered to you for free. It won't cost you anything for this at all. And I'll do the message. We'll record the message and everything. They refused it. And I'm glad they did. One of the greatest experiences in my life has been in that church. Do you think so, Marilyn? Absolutely. I went there. Now, <clears throat> I taught an extension seminary in Bakersfield, California in the 1970s and early 80s. And the pastor that was there that had been Basically, it goes all the way back to Dr. Bailey. But the pastor that was there had come and attended my classes and attended my revivals and things that he came, and they just soaked it up. What I'm teaching you today, I taught church history, I taught Greek and Hebrew and all of these things, biblical doctrines and everything, and that, this man just soaked it up. And he spread it among all of these black churches. When I walked in there, they were like almost bowing down and kissing my feet because I am the one that helped found that church. And the doctrinal statements, the soundness of that church came from me and my teaching. And they got up there and said that too. That I had I had pastored their original pastor, which was an associate of Dr. Bailey. I preached that sermon. I went there and I saw people singing, sung me right into glory land. I mean, did it, Marilyn? Yes. <laughs> I mean, I think that sermon may be on sermon audio, maybe. I, I don't know. I don't think I had it on video. Tracy Adams was her name. I tell you what, that was one of the greatest experiences I ever had in my life. I mean, it was wonderful. It was heavenly. And I told him afterward, you were right. We didn't need to go to Valley. You couldn't have had this service at Valley Baptist Church. It wasn't going to happen. But what was wonderful. Dr. Bailey strongly protested upon a motion of old Dean Johnson. He was employed at $100 per month plus $25 per month for tribal expenses. It being understood that he was to return any offerings he received on the field. He forthwith proceeded to go not to the Negro Baptist churches, but the white Southern Baptist churches, telling them that his salary was too small and that he had been authorized to receive offerings on the field. A few weeks later, the board met and reduced his salary to $50 a month and advised him that he was not to receive any offerings from other churches than his own race. Would they have done that to anybody else? Uza Mia. No. No. Wrong. The good, the bad, the ugly. This is the bad and the ugly right now, okay? This is what happened, really. No white offerings. At this point, the secretary reminded the brothers that it was 12-15 uh, and they had agreed that when the meeting started to adjourn for lunch. Sometimes they'd go all the way, they wouldn't eat lunch. <laughs> they'd just go up and the weapons out there jumping up and down all this food ready and, and they, they don't come to eat. 
You've met that before, haven't you, Marilyn? You have to have trouble with me. <laughs> They go all through the day without taking time for lunch, but this time they had agreed to take a little time out for nourishment, of course, to discuss issues both past and present. <clears throat> We're going to go on here a little bit further now. Now we have a, uh, an election. And they, they elected a man, and then they found out that he had been divorced. And so they wanted to uh, not let, allow him because he had been divorced. They didn't ask why he was divorced or anything else, but he said that. That a divorced man would be an executive secretary of Southern Baptist Convention of California. If Brandon's supporters knew that he was uh, divorced, they carefully said nothing about it. Nevertheless, correspondence with him confirmed the fact that he was, and in the meantime, Brandon laid the whole matter before the board, giving assurance that he would not accept the, the position if it would bring any reproach upon the Southern Baptist cause. I remember working with missionaries at the American Baptist Association. They had a missionary in Canada that had done such a wonderful work up there, but he married a woman that had been divorced. And many of the churches would not support him. But his work up there was undeniably of God. He would not accept the position that would bring any reproach on the Southern Baptist cause. He reminded the brothers, however, that Dr. B.H. Carroll, the one that wrote this trail of blood, and some others were divorced men also. The result of the whole matter was that the board was called to meet special mission March 16, at which time the majority of the members would give him wholehearted support, providing that they saw fit to accept a physician. At the same time, the letters from various California Southern Baptists were written to Brandon, urging him not to accept and assuring him that his acceptance would be harmful to the Southern Baptists. A few days later, President Scott received a letter from Brandon, officially declining the offer officially declining the offer. <clears throat> Those are things that um, we look upon now as not important as they were in those days. How many men of God, how many women of God were, were abused by this? Now the uh, the minister's retirement plan is, a, is a set forth among the, this group. The minister's retirement plan read by Miss A.T. Estes. I, matter of fact, one of my first jobs was working for him, picking fruit. The fruit I picked was figs. Figs are terrible fruit to pick. Is that right, Marilyn? I was picking baskets full of figs off of this man's trees. Well, he was one of them on the Estes family out there that lived on Fairfax. This is the one. This is him. Who at the time was pastor of the First Baptist Church in Oldale. Orville Gromer, a member of the Relief Annuity uh, Board staff in Texas. Now, they all voted here to, to uh, set aside a retirement plan for these preachers. Sometimes preachers would have a stroke or something and they couldn't work anymore. Now, <clears throat> Later on, we're going to find out that the Southern Baptists are not going to pay any money to these people that retired that the churches did not give to the Southern Baptist Convention. They had to give a certain amount of their income to the Southern Baptist Convention or their pastors could not uh, receive any, any retirement. And also that later on now, well, we haven't gotten there yet, but they're going to say that any pastor that denied a church from receiving alien immersion or churches that affiliated with open communion would not receive any retirement plan either. That's quite a, a chokehold, isn't it? 
the closing message uh, at Wednesday evening session featured an address by Dr. E. P. Aldrich in which he delivered a blistering attack on the attitude of many Northern Baptists toward the work of Southern Baptists in California and other states where both Northern and Southern Baptists operate. The Southern, Northern Baptists did not want Southern Baptists or Missionary Baptists coming in. When he had concluded his remarks, a motion prevailed to authorizing the editor of the California Southern Baptist to publish the full text of his address. The speech, however, was never published because Aldrich did not furnish an editor and a, a, uh, the editor with a copy of it. Going along here, I'm going to find the other places. Here we go again now. Here we have a Christian education stressed. The Baptist colleges, the work of 27 Baptist colleges and universities, 21 junior colleges, and three Southern Baptist seminaries. He stressed the importance of providing ministerial education for Negroes, that the Negroes could go to the schools. This is integration before integration, people. This is the good. <laughs> I, we showed some of the bad. Now this is the good. We're going to have in Southern Baptist, we're going to have the schools integrated with, because they wanted the Negro preachers to be able to preach. And praise the work of the Home Mission Board for its ministry to the Negro Baptist. On page uh, 97, New workers are added to the local association, the Central Valley Association. The G.E. Armstrong, who had been in California for years, who had tried to work with the landmarks, this is a missionary Baptist, who returned to his first love, Southern Baptist. And new workers include Mrs. Will, Wilma Snowball, who had been employed as office secretary in the Sunday School Department and the office of the California Southern Baptist, Russell Ware. These are little incidentals as we go along in church history. We're going to talk to Mr. Bailey again. J.W. Bailey. He speaks. Dr. J.W. Bailey, a Negro evangelist, was present at the meeting and waited all day long for an opportunity to make his usual plea for help in his ministry to the colored race. He recorded or the record of the meeting says that he made a long speech urging the board to request every church to contribute at least one dollar per month for his support. The board took no official action on the matter but by unanimous consent agreed to a suggestion that Floyd Looney, editor of the California Southern Baptist, announce that through the paper that the churches desiring to support Dr. Bailey's ministry could send their contribution to Dr. Crittenden who in turn would send them to Dr. Bailey. <clears throat> Again, <laughs> they weren't going to do it, but they did it, except it never happened. It never happened. That's a bad thing. It never happened. <clears throat> a lot of people through the years have, when they, uh, when they died, they wanted their estates to go to the Southern Baptist Convention, their whole property. And so they would put a stipulation in that when they died that the Southern Baptist Convention would own their, their, state, their homes, their cars, or whatever, their bank accounts, or whatever. Some people would, um, would take $100,000 and, and give it to the association, local association or the convention, on the purpose that they would give them five or ten percent interest on it for the rest of the life until they died. They would have the money, but they had to pay them so much and much so they could stay alive until mm -hmm. they were gone. Sometimes uh, this worked out and sometimes it didn't. I knew a boy that went to the seminary named Yoder. And this is his family that we're talking about here. 
Mrs. Yoder, during her lifetime, had continued to live on the property and refused to allow Southern Baptists to use it. It was pointed out that Mrs. Yoder had deeded the property to the Southern Baptist General Convention of California to be used for a church in Lindsay. The report went on that the State Baptist Church had been organized and that services were held in a chicken house in the backyard of that property. But later moved to Woodlands, uh, Woodman's Hall uptown because uh, Mr. Betcher would come out in the backyard and swear during church services. The committee recommended that Dr. Critton be authorized to take necessary legal action against the vectors to evict them from the property, and the church be given the use of the dwelling house for a place of worship and home for the pastor. Sometimes it worked out, sometimes it didn't. Now these people, these vectors, they took over the property and took care of her, and they didn't want the church around there, which she wanted the church there, but she was incapacitated now. In addition to the announcement of the death of missionary G. E. Armstrong, it was announced that Mrs. W. E. James, wife of the pastor of the Downtime Baptist Church in Long Island, had Los Angeles had died, and the pastor and Mrs. Clyde Jackson of Emmanuel Baptist Church, Dallas Palace, had lost their baby. So they had special prayer for these people. And sometimes they'd take up an offering to support them to some extent for memorial surf service expenses and everything. This is the last we're going to finish this message here with this. For most of the years since the convention had been organized, Dr. J.W. Bailey, a Negro evangelist, had been present and his, uh, his request had been given the privilege of taking collection. While many of the messengers were friendly toward the ministry of Dr. Bailey and were always happy to make contributions to his work, there was a growing dissatisfaction concerning his insistence that he be allowed to take a collection every time Southern Baptists had a meeting. We're talking about a convention meeting, not church meeting. At the convention meeting that year, before it was present, but for the first time was not given the privilege of taking a collection. He wouldn't, they wouldn't give him a privilege of taking the collection. He therefore came to the pre-convention board meeting in San Diego and charged them that they, he had been discriminated against, which he had. The board took the position that he was not being discriminated against since there was no other nationalities in the minority groups represented in the convention that were not allowed to take collections for their work. Dr. Bailey remarked, Well, brethren, if you won't let me take a collection, will you let me give something? At which time he took out a dollar out of his pocket, handed it to Dr. Crippen and said, this is for the state missions. A dollar was a lot of money back then. This man was traveling all over the state of California, working with black Baptist churches, Negro Baptist churches, missionary Baptist churches, and they were more sound than some of the others. We're not finished with him yet. The old man still still there, he's still preaching, he's still helping. I told you I'd talk about the good, the bad, and the ugly in all of this, because I know it. I know these people, I know what they did, I know where they came from. Many of them were very prejudiced. And he was always put on the back burner. Lackey always tried to push forward for him, because he saw what kind of work he was doing. Even uh, Looney, Floyd Looney, did what he could to uphold him. Our Father, we send this message out for your honor and glory. Please use it. Please help us not to make the same mistakes that we did in the past. And yet, Father, these people were soldiers in your army through all these years that helped establish your truths in the state of California. 
Please forgive me where I fail you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.